<clears throat> in this tutorial, we will uh, make a hinge. So, quick sketch. Choose one of the work planes. I will draw half of the hinge. Okay, or one part of the hinge. I will make mine about 40 by 60. You can obviously draw out any hinge you want to your specific size. I'm going to add two holes. I'm going to find the middle. Remember, a triangle appears when your cursor is over the middle. Move in from the edge and place a six millimeter circle. Do the same from the other side. Then use the dimension tool. Click in between the line to the middle of the circle and choose a distance of 15. Again, you can choose the measurements you want. This is just an example. Finish the sketch. Click extrude and extrude this design, maybe two millimeters. Click OK. Then I am going to click the sketch tool again and choose the end surface of the cuboid shape you've just made. Click on the circle tool, find the center of this edge, click and drag out a circle of say six millimeter diameter. Then I'm going to finish the sketch. I'm going to extrude this distance of minus 28 or 29. It'll make sense later why I'm doing minus 29. I'm not doing minus 30. That would be exactly half the distance of this face at 60 millimeters. I'm doing slightly shorter, so I have a slight gap between the two parts. And you want that to be a join, not a cut. Yeah, always check wherever you want a join or a cut. Click OK. Again, on the same surface as before, draw another circle from the center of the, the same circle you drew before to create the barrel of the hinge. And enter four. This time, I want to make a hole. So click and drag it through. Again, minus 29. And this time it is a cut. Now go around to the other side. Choose this face. Again, another circle from the middle of this edge. On the opposite side, obviously, this time. This time I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. It's 6.5 millimeters. Finish the sketch. Extrude button again. Select both parts. And this time go this way. And this time you have to go minus 32. Or 31 actually, I think. Click OK. Make sure it's cut. So you're cutting away this material this time. So you're left with this. This is to leave a little bit of a gap when we add the other half of the hinge. So that it can turn freely. Uh, other little finishing touches could be using the fillet tool. Select that edge, hold down the shift key, click on those two edges, and there's a small fillet. 
I can also use the chamfer tool. Make chamfers are a tapered edge for the screws to fit down into. Our countersink, sorry, is the proper word. Yeah, so we have a countersink or a countersunk edge, I should say. So we can put screws or bolts down in the lap. So that's one half complete. So what we want to do now is beside bodies over here in the browser on the left hand side choose the drop down and you'll see body one when you click on that the whole object should turn blue so it's selected control and right click i'll just right click and go to create components from body so this is not a component components are what you use to assemble bits together so what we want now is another component exactly the same as this. All we have to do is make sure it's all selected as it is here and just copy and paste. So command C and command B if you're a Mac. And let's move it apart so you can see you've got two of them. Click OK and now I see you've got two components to make up the hinge. So what we want to do now is join these together in the assembly tool. So we'll click on joint, capture the position. I'm going to select the end of this hole here. I'm going to select the other matching hole. At first it moves it the wrong way. All you have to do is click on this little button here where it says flip and it'll flip it out. You don't want them to actually join, but you want a slight gap between each was 29 millimeters, so we need a two millimeter gap between them. Minus two. Which is probably in reality too big, but it gives the idea that that's way too big. Um, so you now have two components, but we can't move them, so or, or we can't simulate the rotational motion of the hinges. So what we have to do first of all, select the first component. So select, so it's turned blue. Right click and go around it. Capture position. You'll find, but I just realised I've done something wrong here, which is a, a good way of showing you how to change it. I still can't move it. The reason why? Because the joint we made is not a revolute. It is a fixed rigid joint. You can tell that by the icon here. That is a rigid joint. So if I control, right click and edit the joint. Here I go to motion and I click on revolute. You will see it doing the animated movement to show how it rotates around each other. Click OK. Now you should be able to click on it and drag. There you go. All right. If you think that is too big a gap, you can change that. It's way too big. So I could, I can do that several ways. Another interesting tool to use is, I think it's offset face. Let's try that, offset face. If I go to the edge of that and add 0.5. Yep. And let's do the same with this piece. So offset face. 0.5. Yeah, maybe too much now. Remember, we can always go back here. Let's change it again. So 
We'll set face again. Something like that. Still doesn't look quite correct, but it gives you the idea. So what we could not do now is add an appearance to it. So we'll click on the K and it opens the appearance dialog box. So we can make it like a brass or a goldy sort of color. So scroll down until you get the metals. Just close some of these so I can see metal. Let's see what we have. Let's try brass. It's common brass polished. Yeah, there you go. 